the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. We begin our service for Good Friday with a reading from Psalm 27, reading responsibly, as printed in the service folder. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh. When my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his tabernacle will I sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsaken me, O God, my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes. For false witness rise up against me, breathing out violence. I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who lay in the tomb and so hallowed the grave to be a bed of hope for all who put their trust in you. Give us repentance and forgiveness of our sins, which were the cause of your passion, that when our bodies lie in the dust, our souls may live with you forever. Amen. Hello, this is hymn number 113, Upon the Cross Extended.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapters 52 and 53. See, my servant will act wisely. He will be raised and lifted up and highly exalted. Just as there were many who were appalled at him, his appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any man, and his form marred beyond human likeness. So will he sprinkle many nations, and kings will shut their mouths because of him. For what they were not told, they will see, and what they have not heard, they will understand. Who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and who can speak of his descendants? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, he will see his offspring and prolong his days and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After the suffering of his soul, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. The Word of the Lord. It is written, No man can redeem the life of another, or give to God a ransom for him. The ransom for a life is costly. No payment is ever enough, that he should live on forever, and not see decay. God never minces words, but rarely does he speak in a way that leaves out hope whatsoever. And so the violence goes unchecked that whole day. The sky turned black under the wrath from heaven. The man on the middle cross dies. And with his death, the hope of redemption, some still held on to. Also the fear of losing their power, others stopped at nothing to preserve. The threat of the world being saved from hell that the devil had attacked, had plotted against almost from the beginning. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. Though Jesus' de death meant different things to different people that day, they all had one thought in common. Jesus was being punished. He was nailed to a cross, after all, a method of execution save for the worst of criminals, the greatest of humiliations. And no one came to his rescue that day, from heaven above or earth below. Many tears were shed, but that didn't stop his bleeding or slowly suffocating to death. Instead, the religious leaders kept ridiculing him, who were soon joined by the Roman soldiers and eventually by those two criminals crucified with him. 
No miracle here. No escape this time. Not much to say. You know, they were all right, but for all the wrong reasons. Jesus was being punished on that cross by God for our sin. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Our ability to think that we're not as bad as all that, to deserve death, really? Would be comical if we were not so self-incriminating, so eternally damning. How else can God say it? In what other way can he make it more clear? No man can redeem the life of another. No payment is ever enough. We don't have a problem on our hands as if sin is just dirt that can easily be washed off and then we'd be okay again. Problem solved. No, by our sin, we created a spiritual dilemma for God, who, because he is holiness, cannot tolerate sin, nor will he suffer the presence of sinners, but by all that is true, right, pure, he must punish sin with the separation that it seeks to have from God. And yet God, who, because he is love, gives us the very best that his nature, his will, his power, can share with us as his creatures. That is life. Not only in a body, but even more with a soul that reflects his spirit. And God, who withholds nothing to make this relationship with him the ultimate blessing for us. I mean, what else could God do? Our sin deserves death. His love wants you and me to live. And of course, of course, God couldn't turn to you or me for a solution. We have nothing good to offer and have no right to speak in the first place. And so God did the unthinkable. What we would have never imagined possible or ever been in a position to ask. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds we are healed. On the cross, we see the perfect justice and the eternal judgment of God against our sin. On that same cross, at the same time, with greater passion, you and I see God's unlimited love and his unconditional forgiveness of us sinners, all because God did not spare, but sent his Son. All because the Son shared our flesh and suffered our pain. For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver and gold, you were redeemed, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. Jesus gives you life because he died for you. And Jesus gives you and me hope because his death ended when he rose to life everlasting on Easter for you to believe. That, that alone, is why we call this Friday good. God is good. Amen. We continue our service with the verse of the day as printed in the service folder. Christ became obedient for us unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has exalted him to the highest place and given him the name that is above every name. We join together in the prayer our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the reading from the 51st Psalm, also printed in the service folder, 
reading responsively. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity. And cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions. And my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth. Sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the most inmost place. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence. Or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways. And sinners will turn back to you. Save me from blood guilt, O God, the God who saves me. And my tongue will sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. In your good pleasure, make Zion prosper. Build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then there will be righteous sacrifices, whole burnt offerings to delight you. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. God most holy, look with mercy on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed, be given over into the hands of the wicked, and suffer death upon the cross. Keep us always faithful to him, our only Savior, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hello, this is hymn number 119, Were You There? <laughs> 